This is February's monthly build. If you saw my video from a few days ago, you'll know that I wasn't exactly happy with the finished product. Well, I've been working on it for the past several days. I've made a bunch of changes, done some benchmarking, and let's take a look at how it turned out. So as a frame of reference, here is what this build looked like when we last saw it in my initial video. Once again, this is February's monthly build. We did a full custom loop setup with a Gigabyte RTX 2080 Super Water Force card. It comes pre-blocked, and I decided that I wanted to make a full soft tubing loop inside the Define 7XL. The build process itself was really, really easy with the small exception of having leaks everywhere in the system. And if you want more details, go check out this video right up here. But besides the fact that it leaked, I wasn't happy overall with the way the system looked. I didn't like the green, I didn't like the way the back plates played off of the accent colors of the cabling, the cabling and the coolant didn't match, and the tubing runs, although I haven't changed those just yet, I wasn't really satisfied with. So what I decided to do was make some changes. And the easiest way to go about doing that was to go along with the color scheme of the backplate and the GPU support bracket because unfortunately I can't change that. Now obviously I could change the LEDs that shine through them, but the backplate itself has like a rainbow color scheme on it. Again, this is my fault entirely for making that choice when I placed the order with V1 Tech because the backplate itself is awesome. I just goofed and ordered the wrong one. So in order to go with that theme, I decided to try to make everything rainbow vomit color. I know some people out there hate it, but to be honest, I kind of dig it. And almost all of our components are capable of showing that color scheme. So what I did was, or the first thing that I did was, I decided that I was gonna go, instead of with green cable, green and black cables, we're gonna go with the new Lian Lee Strimmer cables, the Strimmer 2, I guess, the second generation of their cables. We saw these at CES 2020. Lian Lee sent me over a set of them, so we've got both the PCIe and the 24 pin cables and they look awesome and they come with a controller box so you could cycle through all kinds of different colors and presets and patterns and whatnot. Again, I just have it on the rainbow mode for now, but I think that kind of matches with everything else we have going on in the system. The second thing I did, and I guess maybe this sounds kind of obvious, but I installed Windows. This allowed me to install MSI's Dragon Center uh, and their Mystic Light software that coordinates with the motherboard. So that means that I could speak to the pump, the RGB on the pump, the RGB on the CPU block, the RGB on the IO cover of the motherboard, and the RGB effects on our memory. So the memory I left at, uh, at rainbow, because again, kind of matches the rest of the color scheme, and the other items I made white. I didn't really like the rainbow effect that the Dragon Center software applied to the pump, to the block, and to the motherboard IO cover. So leaving it white, doesn't cause much of a contrast, and sometimes I actually like doing this. I have this in my personal setup too. I have some white along with uh, the rest of the rainbow. And I think it looks pretty good, and we're gonna leave it like this, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. The third thing I did was to change all of our fans to rainbow coloring. Now this was pretty easy because they are all daisy chain. They're all hooked up to an adjust R1 fractal controller. So it was just a couple button presses and we got our rainbow coloring. The last thing to do took a little bit longer and that was to completely drain and flush the system and then refill it with clear coolant. The clear coolant sets off the rainbow effect a lot better than the opaque green coolant did. Although green sort of goes with rainbow, I think this is a lot better and I like the way this looks a lot more. Now, as far as the loop goes, I'm not still entirely happy with the runs and I talked about this in the initial video. I don't really like the way the tubing runs ended up. And that was more, more because I had to take away a lot of the fittings that I used because they were leaking, unfortunately. So that meant that a lot of the clean, straighter runs that I was originally planning, I couldn't do. Uh, that's unfortunate. As I said in the first video, I would maybe like to try a hardline setup with this kind of loop. I think it would look pretty good, but we're not gonna get that to that today, unfortunately. So we're gonna stay with the soft tube loop. I just left it in place as is, but again, refilled it with clear. And I think this is a much better aesthetic solution than we had going on before. So overall, I am very pleased now with the way this looks, whereas when we left off our initial video, I was actually 
kind of upset. I thought it looked terrible. So this is much better. And I wonder if you guys agree. Let me know down below in the comments if you think this is better or if you think the initial green setup was better. But after we did that, it was time to do some testing. Now what I did was I wanted to see what kind of temperatures we got when the system was under full stress. That meant I was looping Cinebench and looping Unigen Heaven. So with both of those tests running for 20, 25 minutes or so, I pulled up Hardware Info 64 and I started to monitor the temperatures of the CPU and the GPU, because remember this is a full custom loop. Both of them are involved in our water cooling setup. And temps looked really, really good. Looping Cinebench over and over and over is one of the worst things that you can do for your CPU as far as thermals goes. And that's gonna really skyrocket your temps very quickly. And the fact that I was also doing that while stressing the GPU through Unigine Heaven meant that we should definitely see the worst thermal situation that we could possibly have here. And even with that, with both of those going on, the CPU was staying in the mid 50s and the GPU itself was in the mid 40s and that was as high as it went. As I did mention in the first video when we were going through our components, two 360 millimeter radiators is more than enough cooling for this kind of a setup. It is probably overkill and could handle an SLI setup with a 3950X, but that's not what we're going with here. We're going with the lowly 3900X and just one 2080 Super. So as a result, our temperatures were well under control no matter how long I left that loop running and I was very happy with the thermals of the entire system. Also, it's really, really quiet. The fans don't have to work that hard because there's so much radiator space. And as a result of all that radiator space, that means that there's a lot of just passive cooling going on. I'm looking at the system right now when it's not under load and a couple of the fans are not spinning because they're PWM controlled. So the motherboard is telling them, hey, relax, you don't have to do anything. We're not stressed right now. So that was actually something that I was really happy with when I, after I put the system together and booted it up, installed windows and everything, and I was sitting here and it was just dead silent because the fans don't have to spin. So if that's something that you're interested in, then consider putting more radiator space in your loop because the fans won't have to be spinning at full speed all the time. And you'll have a much quieter system, just like we do right here. As far as performance goes, I did run a couple of games at uh, 3440 by 1440 ultra wide. I think this kind of system lends itself really well to that resolution. Uh, 1080p, this system is way too powerful for. 1440p even, I think this is probably overkill, but ultra wide 1440p seems like it's kind of right in the wheelhouse. 4K, this might not be quite there yet. Uh, so I think that sweet spot of 1440p ultra wide is something that if you have a system like this, a 2080 Super and a, a 3900X, I think that's probably what you're targeting. So that's what I was testing. And I ran three different games. Uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood was running between like 180 and 210 frames per second. Super smooth gameplay. I was really happy with the way that was performing. And to be honest, I sat here and played that for quite a while. I also tested two other games in their canned benchmark first of which was Far Cry 5, and the second of which was Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Both of those were in the 70s or 80s uh, as far as average frame rate goes, and while that might not seem like uh, a super result, it, it's definitely more than enough in those kinds of titles to be a very playable situation. Uh, and again, I was running at all ultra settings on everything, so you know, turn something down to high and all of a sudden you're hitting 100 frames per second, which seems pretty good to me. So I was definitely happy with the performance of the system. And again, even under those kinds of situations, because we weren't running under full CPU and GPU stress, the system was running cool and quiet. So I think overall, after I made the changes to the system, I am very happy with it. Uh, I am still not 100% pleased with the tubing itself, but you know, maybe that's something that we can address at a later time. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep this together or not, to be honest, so we'll see. If I do make more changes to this and it does stay together, I'll certainly film it for you guys, maybe do a hardline build out of it or something like that. But what changes would you guys make? What do you think that this system needs that it doesn't have right now? Um, maybe more memory, 
maybe a different tubing configuration, maybe a different graphics card. Let me know down below in the comments. Uh, thank you so much for watching this part two of February's monthly build and uh, get subscribed to the channel. If you're not already, check out the merchandise store. We got these hoodies in stock and uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.